Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
reading from the letter to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker. To Apphia, our sister. To Archippus, our fellow soldier. And to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel, but I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. <coughs> For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, 
all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In 1977, James Dobson, a kind of renegade United Methodist minister in Tupelo, Mississippi, started a movement that he called Focus on the Family. Two years later, in 1979, a firebrand Southern Baptist preacher named Jerry Falwell in Lynchburg, Virginia, flexed his political muscle by creating a conservative political action group called the Moral Majority. What both groups shared loosely in common were religious and political commitments that purported to be biblically rooted and reflected the deeply reactionary views of their leaders. Fundamental to their teaching were three essential challenges to American society at the time. First, to repent and return to God. Two, to resist what they saw as a cultural shift or drift toward immorality. And three, most especially, to restore family values. By family values, they meant recovering a perceived earlier cultural norm where the nuclear family was strictly based on the so-called biblical model, husband, wife, and child, or children. They based their teaching especially on the Old Testament, stories of creation, especially Adam and Eve in Genesis, and also on the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, as you well know, those are the two Gospels that give us the birth narratives that we read with great appreciation every Christmas that detail the journey of the Holy Family to Bethlehem and beyond, Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. As I recalled Reverend Falwell and Dobson and their move movements while I was thinking through this passage from Luke, I was struck by two things. The first has to do with that particular gospel lesson that we just heard read. Now remember, as you know, we have been reading from Luke now for some months, hearing about Jesus and his teaching and his preaching and his healing in one episode after another. Many of these stories deeply touch our hearts, such as the parable of the prodigal son, the parable of the good Samaritan, and more recently the parable of the, the great feast or the great banquet where all are welcome from the highways 
and the byways. The stories also involve interacting with domestic life in one form or another, households, families of different sorts, two sisters, Mary and Martha, and so on. Jesus seems not at all opposed to, or hostile to the life of a home, wherever it is and whoever inhabits it. But we've also heard stories that are bound to give us pause, such as when Jesus sternly warned that he had come not to bring peace but division and that his message would turn family members against one another across the board. And then today comes this short but shocking passage. Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. All this brings to mind an episode from early in Mark's gospel, or maybe it's Matthew's, when Jesus' family comes looking for him. The passage reads as follows. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Now, no matter what yours and my biblical perspectives may be, this scripture and other similar passages in the Gospels challenge all of us when it comes to understanding exactly what family values really mean in the light of the life and ministry of Jesus. So I want to be bold and suggest a way through this maze. In order for us to understand the content of any particular part of Scripture, we must also understand it in the context of the message of Scripture as a whole. In our Gospel lesson this morning, this seemingly inexplicable call to hate, mother, father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even life itself, is set within a series of examples that follow that have to do basically with the cost of discipleship. It is all about the ultimate allegiance of persons who would follow Jesus. Again, in another gospel, the point is much less confusing when Jesus says, whoever loves father or mother or son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So, Luke uses this text from an earlier gospel, but he sharpens it to press his particular point about what it means to be a faithful disciple, about what it really costs. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. The second thing that comes to my mind regarding the two now deceased gentlemen clergy that I mentioned earlier is the ever-expanding scholarly studies of the scriptures, which continue to yield new insights into the people, times, and places where the stories in the Bible took shape. When I was teaching pastoral theology at Sewanee, one of the texts that I used in class was a book by a man named Philip Colbertson called Get Caring for God's People. Professor Colbertson was a much renowned and highly esteemed predecessor of mine in that faculty position. I never met him, 
but I learned a great deal from his work. In one section of that book, he has a long list of very detailed scripture references that describe not one, but, but many, more than two dozen different configurations in which families were formed in both Old and New Testaments. It is an eye-opening window into a world that all of a sudden seems not to be so different from our own time. Surprise, surprise. My guess is that neither Pastor Falwell nor Dr. Dobson would have read or cared very much for this particular study, but at the very least, it profoundly challenges their very narrow biblical view of human relationships then and now. I think the main point of today's passage, and indeed much of the gospel itself, is that all relationships, whether family or otherwise, all relationships are important in the realm of God. Remember the first and great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And the second which is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, our first and primary family is God's family, the family of Jesus, which is the whole human family in all its myriad configurations. In the context of this higher allegiance, we as disciples in our own families and in the wider human family are called to go forth into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's as simple and as complicated as just that. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray for Christ's church in the world, we use form three of the prayers of the people, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Let us especially remember this day all those affected by hurricane this past week, those who lost their lives, the injured, the homeless, the now unemployed. And let us pray also for all those who are seeking to bring recovery and rescue to those affected. Let us pray for all those who find themselves in the face of violence this day, that they may know the presence of the Prince of Peace with them. Let us join together in the prayer on the green card in your prayer book, a prayer for the calling of Emmanuel's 11th rector. Lord God, for 132 years, you have blessed Emmanuel 
with rectors who have faithfully led your people in the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit give counsel as we discern and call the 11th rector. Fill his or her heart with love for the ministry to be done here, with a passion for encouraging and supporting the ministry of all the baptized, and that the diverse gifts you have given to us may be appropriately utilized. May our faith and joy rest in you as we seek to know you and to make you known. Amen. As we pray for the calling of our next rector, we also pray for wisdom and strength for our new bishop-elect, Jonathan Foltz. Lord, hear the prayers of the, your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Using the form of confession found on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. This morning, we're reminded once again to update our contact information. Um, it's on a table out here by the front doors. Make sure the information that we have is correct, and make sure that we have you in our directory, because if we don't, there's a form there that you can fill out so that we will have you included. Several things I want to mention this morning, because they're all kind of starting up again now after a summer break. This week on Tuesday, the Tuesday Bible study will begin meeting again. That's at 9.30 a.m. On Wednesday, the youth group starts up again. And we also on Wednesday have our celebration dinner, which will be preceded at 5 o'clock by evening prayer. So come and have your souls nourished at evening prayer. And then at 5 and at 5.30, we'll nourish our bodies with a wonderful meal in the parish hall. I also want to mention that uh, next Saturday, the 14th at 1 o'clock at St. Thomas's in Sturgis, we'll have our pre-convention deanery meeting. 
everyone is welcome to come to that. So I encourage you to come and represent Emmanuel uh, at that meeting. The last thing I want to mention is, and please do look at your bulletin because I'm not mentioning everything that's in here, but the last thing that I want to mention is that we're making a couple of adjustments to the liturgy. We're moving things around just a little bit. And so starting this morning, one of the things that we're changing is that those who come up for anointing and prayer for birthdays, anniversaries, travel, healing, that is going to be immediately following the announcements. So you are going to come up preceding the ushers starting today. So is there anyone who wishes to come up for anointing this morning? have birthdays, one birthday, anniversaries, okay, just see if we can group people at all. I guess we can't group people this morning. I'm going in this week for treatment to battle cancer, and I'm going to ask for prayers. Heavenly Father, your daughter comes before you, bidding our prayer for her, your healing for her. Give her strength, give her peace this week as she undergoes medical care. Let her know your presence with her. Patsy, I lay my hand upon you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ beseeching him to uphold you and to fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are outwardly anointed with this holy oil, and I pray that your Holy Spirit will grant you a special inward anointing of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to your journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May your presence with your family bring comfort and strength. And may all find joy in that time together. Amen. That's not how it was. Thirty-nine for about the twenty-fifth time, he says. <laughs> Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart may thy peace, which passes understanding, Abide all the days of his life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Anniversary. 41 years. You remembered. <laughs> Have you forgotten in the past? Uh-huh. All right. 
O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I'll keep up the good work. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <clears throat> Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
In the name of the people of Emmanuel, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Go in peace. Post-communion prayer is the one found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
see you guys. We're gonna.